Hello, friends of golf course quality fertilizer. I know we're, I'm, we're always looking at grass with my uh, videos and no people or anything in there, and I apologize. But we're going to talk a little bit about uh, signs that our grass needs water because we've been going through so much stress for the last three weeks or so after this really wet spring. Now we're really dry. Uh, and so we're going to talk about some signs uh, to let you know that you'll see in the grass that say, hey, I need to get water. Okay, and so for one of the signs is called fluorescing. Fluorescing is when the grass has this purple look to it. It's actually a chemical change happening in that plant saying that I need to go into dormancy to protect myself from desiccation from this high stress, either heat stress or drought stress. Uh, in most cases around here, I know we have some hot days, but most of it's drought stress uh, that we're seeing. And so there's a little bit here, it's hard to see um, through this video, the purpleness, but you can kind of see this little dry area over here. And so it's gonna be in those areas that are gonna stay stunted and shorter. You'll see it happening like that because it won't grow when it's under stress. You can see it growing a little more over there and, and not growing so much here. And it's kind of got a purple look to it. Um, that means it's fluorescing. When we see that, we wanna get water on it as soon as we can. Uh, otherwise, it's gonna to continue to uh, go into dormancy deeper and deeper. And so you can see that this spot here has already been under the stress at one point in time. And then we watered it, and so it gets this weird spotty look to it. And so we have some that are dormant and some that are still green in there. And so <clears throat> that means that we've had some heat stress. And sometimes when you start to water, it looks really funny. It looks like almost like a disease is there, but it's just that some of these grass blades went into, into drought stress. And so that's just dormant. And so after a couple of weeks of consistent watering, uh, it should pop back even from the dormancy. It's not dead. Uh, and a good example of that is this neighbor's yard over here, which doesn't water at all, even with a hose. Uh, and it goes completely dormant some summers. Um, and then as soon as it starts to rain in a few weeks after it's consistently rained or something, then it'll come back to green and then it'll look like this again. Uh, and so that's one of the signs is fluorescing. Also another sign is tracking. And typically you can find tracking before you find fluorescing. Uh, and it's when you step down on the grass with your foot and you lift it up and it doesn't pop back up. So you notice right there, I can still see my footprint really well. Uh, and so it, you won't see the grass barely moving at all after you've stepped in that area. Now, if you step in an area over here, for example, I mean, it's tall grass, but step in the grass like this and lift up, you can see it bouncing back already. And so that means that it has turgor pressure. Turgor pressure is the water pressure inside the cells of the plant. And if it's low, it'll act like a flattened balloon that won't spring back. And so that's what's going on here is there the turgor pressure here is gone and so the footprint stays uh, and then in the other areas it'll bounce back that means it needs water now does it need it right away at that point yes it does need to get watered and even if it's fluorescing even if it's the middle of the day i'll throw some water on this at least to cool it down so say it'd be five minutes so it's not even watering the soil or even really watering the plant just taking some heat off of there and cooling it down and then i'll water it the next morning really good if i have an irrigation system now if i have a hose and that's all i can water my lawn with i'll water it right then and there and i'll water it as long as i can as long as it's not completely brown where it's going to superheat that soil and start to kill the crowns uh, and you just kind of got that, you can tell it needs water kind of situation. Uh, it's okay to water in the middle of the day. It's not very efficient. It's not optimal, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Um, and especially if you're running from a hose, you don't have much options. So for example, on my yard, I have to run with a hose. And so it gets, it gets a little tricky during the, the summertime, uh, of course. And so I'll just run it for like two hours in each zone. So that way I'm not chasing and going every day because... 15 minutes on a rotary sprinkler, which is the same with the irrigation, the same with the hose. Um, those guys that uh, go around in circles with a stream, that equals a tenth of an inch. So that's not very much rain at all. It'll dry up in a few hours. So you have to make sure that you get enough on there to soak down in the ground and keep those roots down deep alive. Okay. And so uh, it's a challenge. Uh, you don't want to water too often either. You don't want to water every single day where now the grass is starting to turn yellow because it cannot absorb nutrients. Uh, and so if it's turning yellow, uh, everything looks pretty good, but you got these yellowy spots, these fluorescent yellow. 
um, then that means that it's overwatered and it's not able to do any gas exchanges in the root system uh, and be able to absorb nutrients and push them up to the leaves. And so you need to make sure that you're not watering too much. I'd rather have this scenario than too wet and yellow because now I got to wait for the it to dry out. I got the high potential of diseases and all this other stuff. So um, and you also want to try your best not to let it go dormant. So you're spending two weeks watering that area uh, consistently to try to get it back. Uh, okay, so there's my tips on some watering. We'll give you more tips on further f videos. Thanks so much.